that you introduce when and start on time. Uh, I'm not sure if it's already oh, it's already recording. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, thanks. Okay, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining today's AI seminar. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Dr. Huan Zhang from CMU. Uh, he's a postdoc researcher at CMU, and before that, he graduated from UCLA in 2020. And his advisor was Professor uh, Zhuo Rui Xie, and also Huan received uh, his master's degree at UC Davis. And uh, I think, also, you know, Huan's uh, uh, still a postdoctoral researcher. He has done lots of very impactful work in the area of robustness and trustworthiness of artificial intelligence, especially on uh, formal verification and uh, provable methods to evaluate and enhance the robustness of machine learning models. Also, I think uh, in several years ago, Juan con uh, uh, contributed with the very early and the fundamental batch of work on uh, adversarial attack and adversarial depends on, on models. So that's why we see he already has more than 5,000 citations already. Yeah. So Juan has uh, co authored over 40 papers in top time machine learning and AI conferences. And also, he has won the first prize in uh, verification of neural network computation in 2021. Uh, also, he, his work was recognized with the IBM uh, PhD fellowship during. Uh, 2018 to 2020, yeah. So let's welcome Juan to talk about his recent work on uh, how can we trust a black box uh, quest for scalable and a powerful neural network verifiers. Yeah. Thank you, Mohan, for the introduction. So let, let me share my screen first. Okay. Can you guys see my screen? Yeah. Okay, cool. So thank you for the introduction, and uh, I'm, I'm honored uh, to give my presentation here at USC. So in this talk, I'm going to present my recent work on neural net verification, uh, where we want to formally prove the trustworthiness of a neural network. So uh, we know neural networks are very powerful function approximators, and it has been demonstrate to be very successful in many useful real world tasks in computer vision and also natural language processing. The input of the neural network can be uh, images, text, videos, or any generic data. And the output of the neural network function, the fx, uh, gives us a desired results. For example, a, classific a classification label for a image or input sentence. So when applying neural networks to real world tasks, we often want to know if they are reliable enough to be trusted in um, mission, mission critical tasks. For example, it is not uncommon that a, a autonomous driving system uh, utilizes neural networks based computer vision techniques to detect, to detect like uh, road signs, pedestrians, or other important objects around the car. And a failure of detection can actually lead to, lead to death. And similarly, uh, in medical system, a malfunction of equipment or a, a wrong diag diagnosis may also kill people. So in security system, we may ask the neural network to, de to detect suspicious, uh, su suspicious objects or people. And a, a, if a, a, a vision of uh, surveillance can actually cause loss for the object under protection. So the big question here is, can we trust neural network networks and make, make sure it behaves predictably and also reliably uh, when it is applied to those mission critical tasks. So unfortunately, uh, the answer is most likely no, because researchers have demonstrated that neural networks can be unreliable and unpredictable under many realistic scenarios. Uh, for example, uh, in, on the left figure uh, shows a very recent paper at SCCV 2021 where researchers show that by changing the illumination uh, on a stop sign using a chip projector, uh, they can trick the road sign detector and the stop sign will be detected as a speed limit sign. This can actually lead to critical cons consequences in soft driving. And if we blindly trust the outcome of a neural network. So in medical applications, uh, researchers found that a simple rotation of a medical image may flip the out outcome of a neural network 
from benign, uh, from, from, from benign to malignant. And in the case of medical records where we have text, uh, if people, if we, you replace some words with their synonyms, uh, surprisingly, the outcome of neural network can change, which may lead to uh, misdiagnosis. So this input, this, this input that caused those failures are often called adversarial examples in the literature. So finding adversarial examples is principally not that difficult because you can often formulate the problem as a constraint optimization problem. For example, uh, in a simple classification setting, suppose x0 is a positive example. The task of the attacker is finding another x uh, inside the perturbation uh, set C that minimizes the output of the customer and potentially change the classification output to negative. So the perturbation set C is a small set around original input x0, such that the input is only changed by a little bit, so it looks no different than the original input. Um, for example, for image classification, uh, the set C can be a small L infinity norm ball or L2 norm ball around the original input, so the noise is really small and you cannot really see it visually. And it can, can also be like uh, some small patches on the image. And for, for natural language setting, um, you, you, can, you can actually change some words to synonyms. Uh, that's also considered a, a, per, uh, a perturbation set. So this optimization problem can often be solved successfully using gradient descent uh, with gradient from the classifier function fx. Uh, you can basically follow the gradient direction and will, that will lead you to minimize this function and find a, a, a sort of example that crosses the distance boundary. Uh, denoted as x ADV here. So since the discovery of adversarial examples, uh, many people have tried to get rid of them and propose many ways to defend against them. However, we often see that stronger adversarial attacks can break many existing defenses. And it's really hard to show that a new defense uh, won't be broken under newer ad ad adversarial attacks. There are many papers on defense. There are also many papers on attacking this defense. So, and this cat and mouse game uh, can never end. So the challenge here is that, uh, can we trust the neural net uh, uh, given, uh, given potentially malicious and uh, adversarial inputs? One way is to run existing adversarial attack algorithms and show they fail to attack a certain model. But the problem with that approach is that even if you cannot find adversarial examples using a specific set of attacks, they may still miss the adversarial example, and there could exist stronger attacks at, that were able to find the adversarial examples. So you still cannot 100% sure uh, to trust the network, even if you show it is robust against all existing attacks. So to build a trust, we must formally guarantee that no adversarial examples exist within our bounded perturbation set C. And this is the main topic in today's talk, neural network verification. So uh, neural network verification uh, is about uh, formally prove uh, a, a neural network has a certain property. For example, a property could be uh, robustness. Uh, for example, it, it's saying that no other cell example exists around a benign input image. Uh, here I will show a toy example. Suppose I train a one-dimensional one neural network using some connected data here. Uh, and uh, I, I get two classifier functions. One is uh, f1x, another is f2x. And the, both classifiers actually uh, fit the data pretty well. So a simple property we want to verify here is can we prove that output of the classifier is always positive given that input x is between zero and one. So as you can see here, you know, network f1 satisfies this property, but network f2 does not satisfy this property. So this is just a one dimensional case so we can actually plot in the function uh, to, 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 to find this uh, outcome. Uh, but our question is how to verify the property for a general neural network that is high dimensional that you can really, you cannot really plot, plot the function and uh, how to generalize the idea of verification to arbitrary networks. So it is actually a really hard problem. So considering if we use sampling based approach to sample some data points uh, of the neural network function, uh, suppose we cannot know how the function really looks like because it's just a black box. We just uh, can do a finite uh, number of samples on those classifiers. Uh, the issue is that you, if you do something, you cannot guarantee to find the worst case scenario where in F2X you do have a small region that, that the output is negative. 
uh, in high dimensional case, actually, it's almost impossible to do a sampling because uh, you have a exponential number of dependency um, for the required number of samples. And uh, another way is we can just do some gradient descent or whatever optimization method, trying to find the minimum point of this function to see if the minimum is less than zero. But of course, this all, uh, also does not work well because neural networks are often uh, non-convex and you cannot really find the global minimum. You miss that at the local minimum and cannot really, uh, that cannot really sh show you a, if the network is uh, always positive or not. So actually people have shown that the neural network verification problem is in general an NP-complete problem. And so the goal of neural network verification, verification is to develop tools that help us to prove useful properties uh, in a reasonable amount of time and gain trust to a black box. And we want to do that efficiently and we also want our verifiers to be powerful to verify uh, as much networks as possible. So here I will introduce a basic formulation for robustness verification. There are many settings for verification, but for simplicity today, I will just focus on the setting for robustness verification. So consider we have a simple binary classification uh, network that we have an input x0, and the output is called a positive example if uh, the classifier output fx0 is greater than zero, and otherwise it's called a negative example. So uh, the, the property we want to verify here is that suppose we have we are given a positive example fx x zero so the fx zero is greater than zero can we verify that the network always output a positive number given a small region around x zero uh, and this for for example we want to show that given this uh, uh a set c which is a green box around x zero we want to prove that fx is always greater than zero inside this box and the stronger verification algorithm actually allows you to get a larger box. And the largest box is the one that just attaches the distant boundary. Because after you, you cross the distant boundary, you can, you can actually change the label. So it's definitely not uh, robust. So in the robust verification problem, as we can see, we have to consider a set of input x uh, within the perturbation c. With perturbation set C. So uh, the set has an infinite number of points. So if we just, uh, you can imagine that we, we use the set as the input of the neural network function. And so the output is not a single classification number. Uh, it's not a single number uh, for classifying result anymore. The output actually is going to be a range between a certain lower bound and upper bound. So if we can actually show that um, um, we can actually show that this thing, this verification problem is equivalent to a non-convex optimization problem, where we just want to minimize the function value fx under this perturbation set C. So if C is, for example, C is defined as an LP ball, that's the, the euro setting used in other cell attacks. And we can, if we can solve this uh, non-convex problem and show that the optimal f star is less than zero, then we actually find a uh, so example that can flip the, the, the classifier from positive to negative. If we can show that f star is greater than zero, then we, we actually know uh, even the worst case input inside this box C uh, is still positive, so we can verify the, the classifier is robust within the set C. So um, the, uh, the so-called completed verification tries to uh, solve the uh, value of f star exactly. For example, you can use mixed, mixed integer programming for, for solving f star, but that's actually pretty slow because it's a NP-complete problem and it can take a few hours even for very small neural network networks under verification. So, so people uh, mostly focus on uh, the so-called incomplete verification setting, where instead we try to find a lower bound of f star. So if the lower bound is greater than zero, we know, of course, uh, the, the f star is all, all also greater than zero. So we can also verify the network is robust. For example, uh, a naive way to do income verification is you can relax the meet, mix the integer programming problem as a linear programming problem. And so after you solve the LP problem, you get a lower bound of the original uh, meet problem. And uh, the, the goal of a cell attack, as we just mentioned, is actually to find a upper bound of F star. So for example, you can use gradient-based optimization to solve this problem, but you cannot really find the global minimum. So you actually find a upper bound of F star. If you can show the upper bound is less than zero, then you actually find a counterexample that um, the network is 
uh, producing a wrong results. So the, if upper bound is less than zero, uh, the network is definitely not robust. So the uh, those are attacks and verification algorithms actually they try to evaluate the robustness of the network from two distinct perspectives. So the uh, the other so attacks actually tries to solve for the upper bound for this optimization problem, and the uh, uh, verification actually tries to solve lower bound for for the verification problem. And the, the strongest of the incomplete verification algorithm actually gives you the exact value of the uh, uh, optimization problem, which is becomes a complete verification um, uh, algorithm. And the strongest uh, of cell attack algorithm is also trying to approach F star from the upper bound set. So actually, um, verification and uh, cell attacks are well connected um, topics, and it's just trying to solve the same problem from different perspectives. So in this talk, I'm going to introduce a few algorithms I, I developed during my PhD. Um, cron, um, alpha cron, beta cron, and which actually leads to the alpha cron, beta cron verifier, which wins the competition of neural network verification in 2021. And uh, uh, I will first start with uh, the, the cron incomplete verification verifier. So uh, before I start, so any, is there any questions for, for the settings uh, and background of the, the problem? Yeah, I think uh, in the chat, there's a question from Yoni. It says, uh, uh, regarding the robustness of a, a, a verification of a neural network is MP complete. Uh, uh -huh. Was it important? Uh, yeah, was it important? He said he would expect it to be much harder than MP complete. Uh, much harder than MP complete. So the question is, if the problem is just NP complete or even harder than NP complete? Is that the question? Uh, I, I I guess I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, um, I think it's uh it's uh, as hard as NP complete problem because there were polynomial time reduction from the neural network verification problem to a NP complete to a NP complete problem. So, uh, I, I guess it's as hard as a, a, a as a uh, NP complete problem. So. Uh, and uh, in another way of thinking this problem is you you can you can actually uh, do the verification using integer programming techniques. So integer programming we know it's empty complete, right? So you can solve neural network verification using uh, integer programming. So this problem is empty complete. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Juan. Uh, any other questions from the audience before we move on? Okay. Uh, cool. I think I will continue. So I will first introduce uh, the uh, Quran algorithm, which is an incomplete verification algorithm. In this algorithm, as I mentioned, uh, for incomplete verification, we want to find a lower bound for the verification problem. So uh, the optimization problem is we want to minimize fx within the perturbation set C. If the lower bound is greater than zero, we, so, we know the f star is also greater than zero, so no other cell is, exists. So the Quran algorithm actually is an efficient bound propagation based algorithm. I will show you how the bound propagation works. And uh, the algorithm actually finds a linear lower and upper bound for a black box uh, neural network function. So even if we cannot really know how, uh, how the black box looks like, but uh, the Quran algorithm gives you a provable lower bound and a provable upper bound for, 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 the, for fx within the perturbation set C. So let, let's, let's show you how that algorithm works. So consider we have a three layer simple neural networks. We just have uh, three uh, uh, linear layers. And uh, suppose there are no nonlinear operations, suppose there are no values. And uh, so we can, we can actually write the network as a linear function and we can multiply all the weights layer together by doing a, a few uh, matrix products. So the, eventually we just get a linear function with respect to the input. And the bounds for this linear network are actually quite easy to derive because we can just use Cauchy Strauss inequality. Uh, but so the main challenge in the neural, neural network verification is there, there are non-linear operations such as ReLU neurons. So if we look at the ReLU uh, operation caref carefully, we can see actually there are three cases for the ReLU neuron. If we know that the input of the ReLU neuron is between L and U, uh, if L is greater than zero, we know the input of the value is always positive, so it's actually always a linear function. And similarly, if the upper bound of the input is less than zero, then, then we actually know that the input is, um, uh, is always 
uh, negative, so the rival output is always zero. The only case that causes trouble for us is we, we already call uh, unstable neuron, rival neurons, where the lower bound of input is less than zero and the upper bound of input is greater than zero. In that case, rival is actually a nonlinear function and we must deal with that. So the trick we used in the Crown algorithm is to linearly bound a nonlinear function using a linear lower bound and a linear upper bound. We actually want to uh, replace the nonlinear function with their linear bounds during the bound propagation. And uh, this is that we call it a linear relaxation for, for the uh, nonlinear function. And the relaxation depends on L and U, which we call uh, pre activation bounds or intermediate layer bounds for the, for, for the rival network. So let's show you like how this thing works in a three layer simple network. Suppose we have a uh, three layer network with these feeds W1, W2, and W3. W3 here is a vector because uh, the output is just a one dimensionally scalar. So, so the output layer is just a vector rather than matrix. And the goal is trying to find a lower bound of the function fx. So, uh, so we propagate the linear lower bound through the network like this. So at the output layer, we start with the definition fx equals to z3. This is just by definition. And after that, uh, we plug in the, the definition, we plug in the definition of, uh, of the between the relation between the z hat two and the output layer. So this is just also just by definition. This is the, the output the network is w3 transpose um, z hat two. This is just by definition. And the difficulty comes from the, the ReLU function, which is nonlinear, and you cannot just do it in a linear equation. So you have to uh, somehow use the relaxation of the ReLU neurons and the, uh, change the ReLU neuron into a diagonal matrix D such that this inequality holds. So how does that work? The first step is to we first linearly bound the lower and upper bound um, of the ReLU function. For example, uh, here, suppose we know the input range of the rel function is between L and U, and we can actually use this linear upper bound and this linear lower bound to bound this rel function. And, uh, uh, and actually, uh, another interesting here is, as you can see here, the upper bound actually is, uh, is a unique one, but the lower bound actually, we have flexibility. You can rotate the, the lower bound uh, uh, with different angles, and actually, we have a adjustable parameter called alpha here, and you can choose any alpha between zero and one. That's all valid lower bounds. And after that, because our goal is to lower bound is W three transpose Z hat two, and uh, that equals W three transpose ReLU Z two, and we know the lower, we know the linear lower bound and the linear upper bound of the ReLU Z two function, which we know here, and we we have some coefficients a and b for for the linear lower bound and the linear upper bound, and the trick here is just to take because we want to get a lower bound of this this objective. So we take the ReLU lower bound for any neuron G when this WG, the weights for, for this um, um, equation is positive. And we take the upper bound of ReLU when this weight is negative. Basically, you are always considering worst case when you are computing the lower bound. So after that, if you write out the relationship, you can see that uh, when WG is greater than zero, we choose the lower bound, the slope of the lower bound. If WG is negative, we put, choose the upper bound of slope. So we are always choosing the worst case scenario. So we, we can prove the inequality like this. So here, the, the nonlinear function value is replaced by a diagonal matrix D. So uh, overall, we, we, we propagate this linear equation through the network by um, replacing the relaxing random neuron. Uh, by some uh, diagonal matrix. And the linear relaxation actually allows this uh, inequality to still hold. After that, we just, uh, by definition, we know Z2 equals to W2 Z hat one, just plug that in to progress through the linear layer. For the next layer, we do the same trick and we create another diagonal matrix D1 to reflect the relaxation of red neurons and to make this inequality hold. And finally, uh, we plug in the definition Z1 equals W1X and now we propagate the input from the last layer to the first, so the input layer. And we got this so-called crown inner bounds where we bound the neural network, uh, we give the lower bound of the neural network using a linear function. And here we can write the coefficients of the linear bound A uh, as a product of the um, you know, neural network width. 
And actually, they can be uh, efficiently computed on GPUs because it's just a bunch of matrix multiplications. So eventually, um, we, we get a lower bound for, for the, for the, uh, for the nonlinear uh, neural network function. And, uh, uh, and eventually, we, we want to get a concrete number for the lower bound uh, for, 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 for the uh, neural network within the perturbation set C. And that can actually be done easily. For example, for the LP norm setting, you can just apply uh, holders in equality to get a lower bound for a linear equation. That's a pretty easy question. And you can actually solve for other more complicated, complicated perturbation set C, where C can actually be a non convex set. Actually, uh, as long as you can uh, solve this minimization problem uh, efficiently. In the Van Damme case, we can just show that if you can lower bound the function fx by the linear lower bound, the, the, the minimum value of um, the lower bound is just at the end, one of the endpoints. And we use this f star prong as the lower bound of the fx function. This is going to be a lower bound of the true minimum of this function. So um, any questions regarding this uh, bound propagation process? Okay, I think I'll just continue. So the next uh, step of this research is to uh, generalize this bound propagation process to uh, uh, general neural networks rather than just re re restricting to a single, a simple faithful one neural networks. Uh, as I show here, um, the backward bound propagation process can be done by propagating a linear e inequality from the output of the network to the input of the network. After you finish the propagation, you get a provable linear lower bound for the neural network. And we can actually also generalize that to a general computation graph, which is not a faithful world neural network. Suppose we have some uh, neural network defined by this computational graph, and we can also propagate the, the bounds from the output layer. We start from some identity, uh, and we pro propagate these bounds through the entire layer in a similar manner as a uh, depth first search to explore this graph. And eventually, we, we are going to reach all the input nodes of the, the computer graph. So for neural networks, the input nodes can either be the, the image input, or also it, it also includes the neural network waves. And uh, um, our linear bounds allows us to consider perturbation on the input of the computer graph, which can either be a perturbation on the input image, and we can also uh, consider the perturbation on the weights. Like if we perturb the weights, how does the output of the neural network change? We, our algorithm can support that. Actually, this algorithm, uh, as you look here, is a little bit complicated. Um, but, um, but the good news here is we developed a library to help users to compute the linear bounds. Um, on a arbitrary neural network architecture. So uh, the, the library is based on PyTorch. So you just uh, define your model. Uh, usually, as you have done in PyTorch, you define a model for lambda. I can have ResNet, DanceNet, uh, Transformers, LSTMs. Um, and I just uh, wrap that model uh, with uh, a class called bounded module provided by our library called auto uh, And we define the perturbation uh, we, we want to investigate as, for example, here as a L infinity norm perturbation. And we define a new new type of called bounded tensor as the input of the computer graph. So this tensor, when you put this tensor as the input of the, the, the model, actually, when you're doing the computation, it considers the input perturbation and it can actually give you the linear lower and upper bounds for the, uh, for the computational graph. And um, we do have a, a code demo here where we, we try to compute a bounce on an 18 layer resonant model for the safer 10 data sets. And you just define the model um, uh, regularly, like I think you have done in PyTorch, and, and you can use in, uh, our library to um, compute the bounds um, for, for this network. And most importantly, the bounds can be efficiently computed on GPUs, as I demonstrated. The bound propagation process is actually a quite efficient process that involves a bunch of matrix multiplications. So we can just uh, implement that quite efficiently on GPUs. So uh, that's my second step. And the first step is trying to first tighten, uh, so further tighten the result of a quorum based verification of uh, using optimization on GPUs. Um, before I start, um, uh, we just mentioned that there is uh, for when, when you are when you are relaxing the neurons, 
uh, the lower bound of the right wing neuron can actually be flexible. As you can see here, we can choose any lower bound that with slope be between zero and one. And uh, this number is actually a uh, adjustable number. And uh, so uh, the, the high level idea is here, here is we can try to use different slopes for, for each uh, unstable neuron. And there actually, during verification, there can be hundreds or thousands of unstable neurons. So actually, there is, it is a high dimensional optimization problem. And you can uh, actually have a, a, a lot of freedom here to, to change the lower bound to, to improve the bounds. So at high level, the algorithm works like this. So the original crown bounds you computed is not only a function of x, it's also a function of alpha, where alpha is a lower bound of the real relaxation. So uh, it, we can actually optimize alpha using gradient because when we compute the crown bounds, we, we, just, we are just using PyTorch. Um, and we actually, uh, alpha is the input of PyTorch and you can just, uh, um, you can just compute gradients using uh, auto diff. And this can also be done very efficiently on GPUs. And uh, here we actually don't care about convergence of this optimization problem because as long as you have any valid lower bound uh, with slope between zero and one, so any, any of them is a valid bound. So you just want to uh, see how, how much you can optimize this function, you, you want to improve the bounds, you don't need to convert to the optimal, but because you're, as you can see here, we are maximizing a lower bound. So the lower bound becomes larger, that means the lower bound becomes tighter. So how much we can get from this kind of optimization? Uh, a theorem so we show here is that Chrome actually, um, if you just apply Chrome without this optimization, I mean, that means you, you select the fixed lower, lower bound slope. You can select, select arbitrary one. Uh, for, for arbitrary selection of the lower bound, you can show, we can show that the, the lower bound produced by Chrome is a lower bound of the linear relaxation, relaxa uh, linear relaxation of the verification problem. And uh, the LP relaxation is also a lower bound of the original uh, verification problem. And uh, the, the good thing here is we can show that as long as we, we choose the slope optimally, we can actually achieve the same lower bound. So here we can have a equality. If the slopes alpha are optimal set, we can achieve the same results as a linear programming verifier. So in the linear programming verifier, basically you still relax the right neurons, but in the linear programming relaxation, you're actually using uh, three uh, linear lines to relax the right neurons. So this actually, uh, won't allow for bound propagation because uh, an important fact we use for bound propagation is that there's only one upper bound and one lower bound. But in LP relaxation, there's uh, one upper bound and two lower bounds. In th this setting, you have to rely on a LP solver like Ruby to solve the uh, optimization problem for you. So um, the, the benefits for, for our approach is actually we can do this optimization of alpha cheaply on GPUs rather than solving a linear programming problem um, using Groovy on, on CPUs. So, and uh, actually we also show that we can potentially even outperform uh, the LP based verification because we can jointly optimize the intermediate layer bounds. So uh, when I show how, how, you, how you derive the lower and upper bounds of the ReLU neurons, uh, we show that the lower and upper bounds are actually a function, uh, also a function of L and U. This L and U are actually um, the, the, uh, also recursively computed using Chrome. So I, when, when I introduced the algorithm, I didn't tell you how to compute the L, L and U, the, the pre-activation input range, but actually you can treat this neuron for example, Z hat, uh, ZGI, so you can treat this neuron as the output neuron uh, of the network and apply Chrome to get the lower and upper bound for that neuron. So this L and U are also recursively computed by, by Chrome. So you, as you can see here, the final lower bound you get from Chrome is function of X, it's function of alpha, which is a slope for when you're relaxing the, the, the uh, unstable neurons for the final layer bound. And it's also a function of L and U, which are intermediate layer neurons, uh, intermediate neural layer bounds. And because L and U are also computed uh, using Chrome themselves, and they also have their own sets of alpha primes to, uh, to optimize. So you can see here the L and U are also a composite function here. So eventually we have a large number of alpha parameters to optimize. That allows us to both tighten the relaxation and also make the bounds tighter. 
So here, uh, we can see here, as we can see here, um, if we have the relaxation original look like this, this bound optimization procedure allows us to first choose the optimal lower bound to which produce a tighter bound, and also allows us to make the L and U, which is the intermediate layer bounds tighter. Uh, so the, re the relaxation error, which is the uh, uh, blue error, is much smaller than the ocean. So when this error is smaller, it means we have less relaxation error, so the bounce is tighter. So if you're using typically uh, linear program based verifiers, you cannot write, you cannot cheaply optimize this L and U. So you have to fix L and U. And uh, what the linear program verifier effectively is doing is just optimizing this lower bound. It's, it's not optimizing its L and U. So actually, we can tighten the relaxation during the optimization process. Uh, empirically, what we can observe is that um, if you run a, a linear programming based verifier on, on CPU, it can actually take a few minutes or more. Uh, you, you get a lower bound value for them here, uh, at showing as a, a, a right line here. If you using cron uh, to compute the lower bound, initially, actually, you get a pretty loose bound than an LP. Uh, but after a few iterations of optimization, actually, you can you can actually do significantly significantly better than LP based verifier. The reason is that you can uh, either you can optimize the slope and also tighten the relaxation by optimizing L and U. So this is actually uh, quite helpful for verification because we are not only faster because we can we can run alpha cron on GPUs and we are also getting tighter bounds. So um, any questions regarding this part? OK, uh, I will continue. So uh, the, the last part of my work is called beta Chrome, where we extend the uh, Chrome-based incomplete verification to a complete verification var uh, algorithm. Just uh, um, uh, just let, let's quickly recall what's the definition for complete verification. For the verification problem, we are trying to solve this minimization problem uh, where uh, we have a perturbation set C and we will minimize the function fx. And uh, an incomplete verifier usually gives you a lower bound of f star, and lower bound can be quite loose. If the lower bound is really loose, you cannot verify any problem, and you, you, you are basically get stuck. For complete verification, actually, you are trying to solve the F star uh, exactly, uh, so to solve the global mean exactly. And usually, it comes with a systematic procedure to improve the lower bound. So the init initially, for example, you get a pretty loose lower bound. But, uh, but complete verifier can actually allow you to improve that lower bound uh, gradually. And uh, complete means that when you run the verifier for a infinite amount of time, it will achieve the same uh, result as the optimal value F star. Of course, it, because it's a NP-complete problem, we usually don't uh, just uh, uh, run the verifier uh, for, for, uh, for an infinite amount of time. We just uh, terminate the solver. Then we can prove the property. That means a uh, lower bound is greater than zero. So, so how to achieve complete verification? As I mentioned, to solve this neural network verification problem, we can formulate it as a mixed integer programming problem. And the, the mixed integer programming problem can give you the global minimum, and, but it's really slow, and you can only run it on CPU. And the MIP problem is actually really hard to parallelize. You can, cannot really implement the MIP solver on, on a GPU. That's very difficult. And uh, people usually relax MIP problem to a in, 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 uh, linear programming problem such that you can you can get a lower bound of the verification problem, um, but this is also very slow. So th this is uh, can take a few minutes compared to ours. It's better, but it's still slow. And the most LP solvers are still CPU bound. Like if you use Groovy or C++, you still you have to use a lot of CPUs to compute the bounds. And uh, it, this still does not scale to large networks. And uh, to use bound propagation based approach such, a, such as Chrome, I introduced, it's going to be much faster than LP. Um, and it could be like two orders of magnitude faster because it can be accelerated with on GPUs. Uh, and, uh, but usually it tends to produce uh, even looser bounds than linear programming very far. Uh, another, uh, another method you might think of is just to solve this problem using gradient descent. That's actually the same formulation as a cell attack. You cannot converge to guarantee, guarantee to converge to the global minimum, so you cannot really solve the, the, the verification problem because you cannot uh, solve the global minimum. 
So the trick to from incomplete to complete is to combine a incomplete verifier such as linear programming uh, with, with branch and bound. So and there are some works on, on combining uh, linear programming uh, with branch and bound to, to get the global minimum of this problem. And uh, the contribution of our work is to combine branch and bound with a uh, uh, fast bound propagation based algorithm such as Quang on GPUs. Um, and before I introduce the detailed algorithm, um, so the, the main, uh, the, the high level approach uh, of our um, of, of our verifier is to combine those very fast bound propagation based incomplete verifiers on GPUs, rather than those slower, slower ones uh, based on LP, uh, with branch and bound to also achieve complete verifier. So the task, uh, the, the task here is to boost the, the, the power of the incomplete verifiers such as a Chrome using branch and bound. And our contribution is we can actually be three to four orders of magnitudes faster than LP or mixed integer linear programming based approach. So it enables us to scale to much larger models than existing uh, approach. So let me just give you some quick background on how branch and bound works. So here, uh, the, our problem is to prove the, uh, the fx also always greater than zero given x inside the perturbation set. And we, we, we also know that the red neurons have three cases depending on the pre-activation bounds, L and U. And what really um, needs our attention is the unstable rival case where its input lower and upper bounds are uh, uh, crossing zero. So uh, the, the basic trick using branch and bound is to split a unstable rival neuron to two cases. The first case is the neuron is always greater than zero. The second case, the neuron is always less than zero. In both cases, um, the network actually becomes a linear net. Uh, the, this neuron actually becomes a linear neuron. So you don't have any relaxation error here. Suppose we can split, split all the neurons eventually if we don't have any unstable neurons, then we can solve the problem to global minimum because there's no relaxation used. So to solve this optimization problem, we have to add additional linear constraints called speed constraint that basically says this neuron is greater than zero or this neuron is less than zero. So we can use a incomplete verifier such as a linear programming based verifier to, to check for, for each of the two cases. For example, if our goal is to prove the F star is greater than zero, and we start uh, uh, initially, uh, if we just run the LP relaxation, we get a bound minus 0 0.5, which is not verified. But we can then split this unstable rival neuron into two cases, uh, Z greater than zero and Z less than zero. For the Z greater than zero case, after adding this new speed constraint, we can, the, the, because there are less relaxation here, the bounds improved from net minus, uh, minus 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.1. And in the other case, the bounds actually become 0 0.1, which is positive number. So we know this case is already verified because it's positive, it's uh, achieved our goal. And for this case, we get a negative bound. We need to continue this speed procedure until all the leaf nodes uh, are greater than zero. This is a basic procedure of branch and boundary, just uh, uh, selecting all the unstable rival neurons and split into two cases and consider each of the case separately. So uh, the, our contribution is to use bound propagation for uh, the branch and bound procedure. The pros of this approach is that it's much faster than LP-based verifier because you can, you can parallelize this verifier uh, on GPUs. The cons of this approach is uh, bounce propagation are usually believed to be too loose uh, to, to, be, uh, to, be part, to be useful for complete verification. But we, we were able to solve that problem using the alpha quantum with optimized bound where we show actually it can outperform LP based verifier. Uh, and another issue with bound propagation is it cannot directly handle the speed constraints like z greater than zero and z less than zero, leading to invisible speeds and also incompleteness. So uh, our new algorithm called beta Chrome uh, is proposed to handle the speed constraint in branch and bound. So th that allows us to combine bound propagation approach with branch and bound for very efficient GPU-based complete verification. So um, we, we also we can also optimize uh, the uh, bounds parameters to, to, to get higher bounds, similarly as we have done in alpha Chrome. So at high level, how beta Chrome works? We, we just add a, for, for, for example, in these networks, uh, we have a neuron. We want to enforce that this neuron is less than zero by the speed constraints. At high level, what we are doing here is just adding a Lagrangian or KTD multipliers for this term. So this Lagrangian can be written as a, a beta transpose S 
uh, here, where S is the diagonal matrix with positive or negative one, uh, based on uh, the sign of this uh, inequality. Um, and if we just add this uh, Lagrangian to this optimization problem, and we know that uh, by maximizing the, the beta, so for any choice of the beta, you still get a lower bound of the original problem. And for any choice, uh, by optimizing the beta, you can actually improve this lower bound. And uh, if I rearrange your terms, you can see just here, uh, the difference between beta crown and crown is just the during bound propagation we have a additional term beta transpose S2 here. So we can actually still uh, reuse most of the crown bound propagation procedure, like the, for, the for the implementation, we just need to add a, a simple additional term, which is actually quite easy and allows very efficient uh, implementation. So uh, after we derive the bounds, you, you will see that um, for beta crown, the final bounds is not just a function of X, it's also a function of beta. And uh, if for the LP norm setting, uh, the inner minimization problem can be solved exactly. So if you solve the minimization over X exactly, you just find the maximization problem actually is a concave problem. So you can actually, uh, by optimizing beta, you can find the global ma maximum for the problem. And also recall that we also have a optimizable prime, the alpha for the lower bound slope in alpha ground. So we can actually accurately optimize alpha and beta to achieve the best bound. So our theorem shows that if you optimally set uh, alpha and beta, actually beta cron can achieve the same result as the linear programming verifier uh, with speed constraint. So we can consider the speed constraint during the bound propagation. And in practice, um, as we al I also showed earlier, we can also jointly optimize the intermediate bounds using the beta cron formulation, allowing us to actually outperform LP-based verifier. And this bound can also be very efficiently implemented on GPUs. That actually is very helpful to scaling up the, the problem. So any questions regarding uh, this part of my talk? So for the linear programming based verifier, uh, uh -huh. does that support integer linear programming? So in the cases in which you know the, the search ranges are yeah, so for, for the for the linear programming uh, verifier, you can imagine that uh, the formulation is like this. So first you have a mixed integer linear programming uh, formulation where you decode uh, the uh, status of right and wrong. Uh, as an integer variable, like for example, for this case, I can use the integer variable zero. This case, I can use the integer variable one, like that. And after we relax that integer variable to a continuous variable, actually, um, you can, you, you actually, you, you get the linear programming formulation. That's how, how the linear programming formulation was, was done. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah the, uh, I didn't have uh, enough time to introduce a full formulation for the interior programming. So if you are interested, you can uh, read my paper. We have a uh, detailed formulation for the interior for the interior programming and also the linear programming formulation. Okay, so finally, by combining all these approaches, uh, we achieve uh, the state of our results in our alpha beta ground verifier, which actually wins the competition of neural network verification this year. So let me just show you some uh, empirical results uh, we obtained for the, for the verifier. So there is, there is some benchmarks on complete neural net verification where we just conduct robustness verification on 100 test images on three safer attempted uh, models. Um, uh, and uh, uh, here we show the plots here with, with uh, x axis as a running time uh, in log scale, and the uh, y axis is a percentage of properties verified. And uh, you can see that uh, the clear, the light green line uh, is our verifier. We can do very quickly compared to other uh, methods, as I can see here, uh, to verify like 80% of the um, uh, verification instances. Actually, it takes us less than 10 seconds. Uh, you look at all the existing baseline, they take actually uh, at least around 100 seconds, and sometimes some verifiers are even slower. Like if we compare to the classic linear program based uh, CPU verifiers, like uh, MIP Planet, which is uh, this uh, brown line here that, that was developed four years ago, we get like two to three magnitudes faster and sometimes even, even more, like sometimes it's even four, uh, four magnitudes, orders of magnitudes faster. And you can see we can observe the same thing on all those three uh, uh, models and uh, we can actually verify over 80% 
uh, instance for all the three models under 10 seconds. Uh, actually, these benchmarks has become too simple for us to, to demonstrate our power. So, and we also run uh, experiments on a few other benchmarks where we want to compute the verified accuracy, which is a percentage of image size that can be verified robust in the test set. So given a model, and uh, for example, MIS model and MIS test set, we want to check like how, how many uh, images can be verified um, to be robust. And we can also attack the class var uh, using a PhD attack. And we can know that maybe, for example, 20% of image uh, can be attacked. That means you, for, you, you verify the accuracy can never exist uh, 80% because there, we already show that 20% of image can be attacked. So here we show the upper bound, and uh, ideally the, the verifier should be approaching the upper bound as close as possible. So here the, the red star here is, is our algorithm, and uh, the x-axis is still the time, and the y-axis is, axis is the verified accuracy. You can see that uh, for all the models, we, we achieve the, the best verified accuracy. And sometimes we are, we are not only achieving the best accuracy and also, uh, also faster, sometimes the uh, order of magnitude faster than other other verifiers. And this is another set of benchmarks, which uh, includes pretty hard models that were uh, previously uh, verified using a uh, semi-definite programming based approach. Uh, we can see that we can, we can sometimes be, uh, so you can, if you look at the time, we are like, uh, there's some methods that's really, really slow, but still cannot be, uh, cannot verify as many as image uh, as our approach. And uh, by looking at that carefully, we um, we select two two adversarially trained models. Um, uh, so training is actually a practical way to gain robustness for for machine learning models. But it's really hard to prove that a adversarial trained model is robust using verification techniques because they are they are, they are these models are called verification agnostic uh, because uh, you, during training. You didn't apply any verification techniques to enhance the verifiability of these models. So, uh, so training-based uh, 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 models are actually pretty hard to verify. As you can see here, for example, on this MNIST model, if I just apply a simple cron uh, bound propagation, you can only verify maybe 1% of image. And if you use linear programming, which is much slower than cron and relies on CPUs, you can verify maybe 3% uh, to 5%. And there was a paper uh, from last year's New Rips um, uh, using semi-definite programming approach to verify neural networks. It's actually a pretty strong formulation that you can have to do much, much better than linear programming. Um, but the cost is, is really slow because uh, SDP is much harder than, than, than linear programming to solve. And if you use our approach, you can see that we can do much better by, by combining beta cron with branch and bound. Uh, we can do much better uh, then SDPFO, uh, which is a semi-definite semi programming-based approach. And we are also much faster because we, it only takes us three minutes because we can do the uh, bound propagation and uh, branch and bound so efficiently on GPUs compared to the SDP, SDP solvers. Uh, this solver was actually also run on GPU, but the SDP solver is just uh, too hard to to work well on these large scale problems. On CIFAR, uh, so we, we, also, we also want to highlight the, the, the gap between um, our verified accuracy and uh, the upper bound conducted by uh, PD attack. So because uh, PD attack, uh, if you're using PD attack, you can, for example, attack 20% of images. So the, the, the real robust accuracy of your network is, cannot exist 80%. And using our verifier, we can actually formally verify that 80% of image are, you can prove that they are robust. And the gap between our verifier accuracy and the upper bound by PGD actually is pretty small. Uh, on CIFAR, it, it's actually more challenging for these adversarially trained CIFAR models. As you can see here, uh, we are still making the gap smaller, uh, but we are still uh, on the way of closing this, uh, this gap. We, we hope we can develop a better approach to close this gap between um, uh, verification accuracy and the PD attack accuracy. And lastly, I want to briefly mention the results for the verification of neural network computation. Um, in this, this year, there are 12 teams participating into this uh, verification uh, competition, and each two, submit a, 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 each, each two is submitted to the competition organizers, and they will evaluate the two for you on a standardized uh, AWS environment. 
So the evaluation is really uh, very fair. So it's not like uh, uh, on some papers, uh, you, if you read everyone's paper, everyone claims they, they have the best results. But in the competition, like everything is fair. It's on the same machine and same data, same data input. So just run you to uh, in a complete the same environment. So there are eight scoring benchmarks uh, in this uh, in this uh, verification computation, including image classification, control, and database. And each each uh, each benchmark has uh, tens to hundred instances to verify. And the goal for each verifier is to verify as most possible as most instances as possible, given the uh, under the given timeout threshold. The maximum score is uh, eight by hundred, so that's eight hundred. So, and uh, the 10 data sets involve uh, different applications and they involve different network types. There are relevant networks and non relevant networks and uh, rest nets and also networks with max pool and average pooling. And there are smaller networks and uh, there are also uh, relatively large networks in this computation. And you too really need to, um, uh, to, to, need to work very well on all the scenarios to, to, to win in the competition. So uh, this is the results for the computation. Our two alpha beta crown actually uh, get the uh, highest total score in the, in the computation. And you can see that the, uh, our score is actually quite close to, to the full score of 800. And this tool is uh, developed by me and my collaborators from uh, Northeastern uh, Columbia and UCLA. Um, and uh, uh, if you look at the detailed results here, um, we actually found that our verifier can verify the most number of instances on all benchmarks. For example, uh, here um, we, we plot all the 12 entries to the computation. Um, and uh, this is the percentage of instances that can verify for each uh, benchmark. You can see the light green bar is our method. And we always uh, verify the most number of instances. And sometimes we, we, we lead other methods by a significant margin. Um, and uh, 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 over all the data sets, we, we, we can perform so well. If you're interested in finding more results of this competition, you can, uh, you can look at uh, this link. So finally, uh, although our verifier Alpha Beta Crown has achieved uh, a great results in this competition, um, and we also seen that a lot of progress has been made during the past few years. There have been around uh, uh, a, a thousand times uh, improvements since 2018, like compared to this uh, SMT and MLP based verifiers. Um, we can now do the bound propagation on GPU to solve the same problem under 10 seconds rather than a few hours. But no, is there still is there still a, a, a major challenge remaining? That is to scale this approach to even larger networks such as ImageNet level networks, and we probably still need a hundred times more scalability here. But I'm uh, I'm I hope some uh, researchers, more researchers, can join this area to solve this problem, and uh, I, I hope we can do so after maybe uh, five more years because we have seen so much uh, progress during the last four years. So uh, that's the end of the talk and you can find the code for our robustness verification library and also our winning entry of the uh, winning comp uh, uh, verifier uh, in those links. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks Hua for the very rich talk and uh, your, your work is very solid and I think you know, uh, many of our works, um, for example, constraint learning and also uh, we also add perturbation in the training phase to, to improve the robustness of language modeling. So I think, you know, we, we definitely can talk, talk about those things offline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think we, we just probably have uh, time for one or two short questions. So I, I think, Ben, you have a question do you want to ask by yourself? Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I just I was just wondering, like, in the uh, real world, when you're applying those techniques, uh, when they have a lot of examples, do uh, we need to verify them all, or you can have such to select a subset of them that you treat to the um, Yeah, yeah, Th that's a good question. So usually the way of uh, evaluate, evaluating a lot of examples is you you create a data set, like just like you evaluate a regular classifier, like you have a training set and a test set, right? You evaluate the, your classifier on the test set and you get the accuracy. So here the, the situation is the same. So we have, we evaluate our verifier on the test set and we report the verified accuracy, specifically uh, how many examples we can verify on the test set. So I'm not sure if that answers the question. 
I see. I mean, I, I, I would too. Because I see examples like that, even the test set, you have like a hundred thousands or like a, a million of examples. Yeah. I, yes, I was. Yeah. Too yeah, I think in that case, it's just like a, a trade off. If you, you subsample a small portion of the test set, um, you, you can you can you can get some results quickly, but maybe that's it's not that accurate. It's just the same scenario as evaluating a, a regular accuracy of the classifier, where you also run that on a test set. And uh, if you want to do it quickly, you can run it on smaller test set and uh, gives you maybe a not very accurate number, but that, that's that's doable. I mean, that's yeah. Right, right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Any, any, any other questions? Yeah, I think we, we are uh, uh, running out of time already. So yeah, if you have other questions, uh, feel free to reach out to Dr. Zhang through email. And uh, yeah, and I think a, a couple of us is going to follow up with you during uh, one-on-one meetings. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks again for the very nice talk. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me uh, to give this talk. Hi. I see you soon.